Tina is from Alaska. She's from near Denali National Park. And she came to us when she was pretty young, um, just under a year old, because her mother had gotten into some trouble uh, with livestock, unfortunately. So, met all. Today we're at the, what are we at? The Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center in yeah. West Yellowstone. It is amazing. I just want to tell you there's animals and you get really close to them. Yeah, it's pretty neat because uh, they only let certain ones out at certain times, like the bears, they let, let them out one at a time. And there's, I think there's one group of two, um, but in between letting them out, they go out and they hide the food and stuff for them. So they have to come out and they actually have to find the food and dig for it and stuff. Yeah. So it's really cool. We love it. Yeah, we've enjoyed it. And the otters are fun to watch climbing in and out of that ice chest. And they were eating ice. I was wondering if there was something in the ice that made them eat that ice. I don't know. I don't know either. But they got one wolf set that's eaten and the other wolf set that ain't eaten. And the one that ain't eaten is really curious about the other one. <laughs> Yep. So we really hope you enjoy this little video and if you're ever in West Yellowstone, I highly suggest this place. So it says no howling, growling, hooting. I guess we can't hoot an hour. It's only an average of one bear death a year. So you're more likely to die from other things than from a bear. There's some wolves. We have one wolf sleeping right now.
born and raised in human care. They were never wild. Uh, our bears and our birds were more wild and were brought here because of food conditioning in the case of the bears and injury in the case of the birds. The wolves were born and raised in captivity because wild wolves are very shy and very wary of humans. They don't want to be around people. A wild wolf in here would probably hide the whole time, would not come out. No one would get to see them. They'd be really stressed. Nobody would have a great time with that. So our wolves, you may have they'll walk in front of the windows, they'll sleep under the overlooks. They can see through this glass. This is not on my glass. They know we're in here. They can hear us. And they really don't care. Uh, they're very happy to completely ignore humans outside of their space, which is great. Um, that means that they're not as stressed out by us. And Good morning and welcome to the Great Blue Wolf Discovery Center. So on that far left side of the habitat, we're seeing our next bear, Nikina, is on her way out. If you saw that keeper out on the habitat, he was hiding some food throughout the space, setting up all kinds of snacks and interesting things for Nikina to interact with and investigate. Bears have really, really good sense of smell, and right now they want to be eating quite a lot, so she's going to use that sense of smell, that great nose, sniff out all the food, dig it up, and then eat, of course, as much as she possibly can. Uh, so she's got a lot of different options and opportunities, uh, things to interact with and do out on this habitat here. Nikina is from Alaska. She's from near Denali National Park. And she came to us when she was pretty young, um, just under a year old, because her mother had gotten into some trouble uh, with livestock, unfortunately. So man, all of our bears were born wild and over time became food conditions. They got used to relying on human food, whether it was trash, pet food, campsite, uh, chickens in the case of Nikina's mom. Uh, and what ha had happened up there was that Nikina's mother had two cubs with her, uh, Nikina and her brother Kobuk, and was teaching them to find food and how to be successful bears in the interior of Alaska. Grizzlies stay with their mom for an average of four years. Nikina and her brother were far too young to take care of themselves. Uh, they would not have been able to survive on their own and they had already learned that behavior. Bears are very, very smart. They have really great memories, and they learn really quickly. So Nikina and her brother would, if they had survived, likely continue to try to raid livestock, but likely in those conditions would not have survived on their own. So wildlife managers knew both of those things and knew that Nikina and her brother could not stay in the wild there anymore. So they came down here to us. Her brother has since passed away of old age. Nikina is 25. So she is a senior bear. She's one of our older bears. In the bear habitat, the guy's going around hiding food for the bears. As soon as he's done, they're going to let the bears back out. Once a day, they do let the kids go in here and hide the food for the bears, which is pretty cool. Come running over here, they know it's almost feeding time here at 10 30.
the banks of the Yellowstone. inside this cooler. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we can't see him because he's turning. Oh, he's turning. There he goes. Oh, he's just sitting in it. That is the cutest thing ever. I love that. They like eating ice cubes. I didn't know otters ate ice cubes. Very interesting fact there. Look at him chewing the ice cubes. The bear traps here. To see how they're catching these bears. And then some garbage cans over here that have been attacked by bears. And coolers. <laughs> I don't know, even a Yeti might not be safe here. Mm -hmm.